Greetings in the name of Christ. I want to welcome all of you to First Baptist Church of Whiteville today, especially if you are a guest. If you are a guest, we hope that you find this a place of worship, and we hope that you experience God in this place in a very mighty way. Uh, I would like to ask that all who are present, if uh, you wouldn't mind adding your names to the friendship register, you'll find those on the end of each pew. Just add your name and then pass it along to the next person. Uh, guests, in addition to your names, if you are comfortable sharing your information, we do ask that you uh, maybe provide us with an email address, a phone number, uh, maybe even a physical address. That way we can follow up with you after the service. But again, we do welcome you here with us this morning. Uh, a few announcements that I want to call to your attention. Um, first is just a reminder of the uh, Happy New Church Year Fellowship Dinner that is tonight at 5.30. If you sign up to join us, we hope you can come and make it tonight at 5.30. What a wonderful time for us to, to just come together to fellowship and to celebrate. Now, honestly, we don't do that in the church enough. So I'm just super excited about this event and hope that you can all make it this afternoon at 5.30 for that, uh, for that dinner. Uh, and for that reason, we have... Um, canceled the church council meeting that was scheduled for two. We have a lot of our folks who are going to be preparing the meal for that. Uh, so we went ahead and, and canceled the church council meeting. Uh, so please make that um, note if you are on the church council and help us to spread the word if anybody didn't get the word. Uh, but we do hope you all will join us for that dinner tonight. A big reminder that we do have a very important business meeting coming up on Wednesday night. We are going to be discussing, discussing the church budget uh, our finance and stewardship team has done a lot of hard work and some good work putting together a budget for us, so we're going to come together to uh, discuss that, so be in prayers for that conversation, uh, which also means that we're going to vote on, in the budget next Sunday morning after worship, uh, as long as have our deacon vote, so continue praying about the budget and the deacon vote as that's coming up, and we hope that you can also join us next week for, uh, for Sunday worship next week. Uh, do call your attention to the back of the bulletin for the weekly schedule, some opportunities to plug in with things that we have going on throughout our week. But as always, we do open our worship with a moment of silence, and look, this is our time to just get our minds right to worship God. If you're like me, you've got a million things going on in your lives, a whole lot of stuff going on, and you've got a lot of things coming up where are you going to go to lunch? What are you going to do today? What are you going to do this week? Folks, this is our time to worship God, to really be fully present with God and with God's fellow believers. So let us take a moment to really find that communion, to really think about why are you here today? So let's take a moment to connect with God and to invite him into our hearts, souls, and mind this morning. Will you join me in a moment of silence? Amen.
And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Surely the Lord is in this place. Do you believe that? Amen. Will you join me in a word of, of prayer? Holy and loving God, we know that you are in this place. We know that you are in this world. We know that you desire to be in communion with us. So God, we ask in this hour, we ask in this day, we ask in this week that you fill our minds, our souls, our hearts with your love, that we might be daring enough to take your good news out into the world. God, we thank you that we were lost and you found us. We thank you that we were in a dark place and you came to shine light on us. And so, God, we ask that you do just that in today's worship service. We ask that you do that in the way that we carry out your gospel, that you shine your light on us, that you show us the way. And, God, we ask that our worship today be truly pleasing in your sight. We thank you for all the people that are gathered here, that they care enough about your good news to be your holy church in very real and practical ways. It is in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. You will find Psalm 14 as a responsive reading in your bulletin today. It is, to start with, kind of a downer. It is negative. It's talking about how we, as God's children, are prone to wonder, which leads us to the little insert of music. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. This is what it sounds like, and then we'll ask that you sing it with us once. Sing that. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel. Read with me responsively. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. Have they no knowledge? All the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? Shall be 
you would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. As human beings, yes, we are prone to wonder. That's part of human nature. However, we have a God, a good shepherd who stands with arms open wide saying, you are in my care. You are in my arms. He does have the whole world in his hands. to join me as we read together 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 through 17 I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service 
even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those whom would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The offertory hymn is 535. I will sing the wondrous story. Within the first stanza it says, I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray, threw his loving arms around me drew me back into his way. Would you stand together as we sing 535? O oh God, giver of all, we are more than thankful, especially thankful for this wonderful church, our pastor, and all of the staff. As we know, it takes dedication of time and talents and money for our church to be prosperous. We are reminded daily that you gave all to us freely. May we give back with generous hearts. And dear God, help us to love one another as you have so loved each of us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.
boys and girls ever lost anything? Have you ever lost anything? A toy? A toy or maybe a pair of sunglasses or a shoe? I'm always losing my glasses. I don't really lose them. I misplace them, and eventually I find them. It takes me some time. Well, today, um, Reverend Ryan Clore is going to be talking about some things that are lost that you just have to keep looking for. Now, in one of the stories, Jesus tells parables, and what they really are are stories that he's trying to teach us something in. And today, he's talking about a woman that had 10 silver coins, and she lost one of them. And she got her a light and a broom, and she went to work to find it. Now, I only have nine silver coins in my hand. One of them is lost. And I want you to come first and find me a coin. Come on. Want to come? Come down here and see if you can find Miss Martha a coin. Look on the floor and see if you can find. He found one. Okay. Now, you go find one on the pew somewhere there. You want to come find a coin? Come on. See if you can find a coin. Miss Mary Alice, can he find a coin? Did you find one? He found one. Come on. Come find a coin. Luke, you can go look. No, you, keep it. you keep it. Okay. Shannon and Luke, come find a coin. Adam, come find a coin. Somewhere on that pew is a coin. You have to look. Did you find one, Shannon? Okay, everybody has found a coin. Well, if I put them all with my nine, I'd probably have more than ten now, wouldn't I? Because all of you all found a coin. Have you not found a coin Come down this end. Come down this end, Adam. Adam, come down here and look. I bet there's some down here. Find you one. Okay. Well, guess what she did when she found her coin? She rejoiced. She was so happy she had her coin. Now, Jesus told that parable for a reason. He wants all of his children to be in his care and keeping. He wants you to be good. He wants you to be to listen, and if you ever go astray, he wants you to be found just like you found that coin. He wants you to be in his love and care. He always wants you to be his children, to be found. So let us try to always do what is right and stay in God's love. Will you pray with me? Bow your head and pray with me, okay? Dear Jesus, Help us to always have you in our hearts so we do not get lost. Amen. All right, go quiet. Don't run. <laughs> Thank you, Martha and children, for that beautiful message. Will you all join me in a word of prayer? Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. We come not as strangers or foreigners, but we're your children, and you are our Father. We were not part of the family at one time, but we've been born again and made part of your family. And because of that, we have the wonderful prospect of living with you through all eternity in heaven. And what a bright future we have. God, we just thank you today for your faithfulness, for your mercy and your grace. You are always there when we need you. You've never turned us away and you've never failed us. You've never failed to fulfill your promises to us and to your world. In our troubles and our trials, and when the road seemed long, you've been right there with us, and you've helped us through. And we give you thanks, and we praise you today, God. Thank you for all that you've done for us, but most of all, we thank you for who and what you are. A God who always extends your loving arms. We want to tell you that we earnestly want to do your will and fulfill your plans and purposes for us. 
We're available because we've surrendered our lives to you and you can do with us whatever you choose. We're all busy with the busyness of living in the here and now. We have jobs, we have families, we have responsibilities. And God, we get involved in all kinds of things, some of vital importance and some of them are only trivial. So help us, Lord, to put first things first. Help us to keep our priorities straight. Help us to seek first your kingdom and righteousness and let the other things fall into their rightful places. Help us to make the right choices that will count for eternity. We pray, God, for the needs of our people today. We also pray for the lost of the world and the lost in our community. We've all come with individual and very personal needs today. Maybe nobody on earth knows about the struggles and the burdens that they're facing, but you know, and you invite us to bring everything to you in prayer. Whatever our needs are, Lord, we bring them to you because you can do something about them. We pray this in the name of our Lord, your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I love those last few words. Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. Amen?
Can y'all guess what we're going to be reading about today? If you will open your Bibles and join me to um, the Gospel of Luke, we'll be uh, in chapter 15, starting with verse 1, reading verses 1 through 10. And uh, one of my favorite parables, and if you've ever been and joined us on Wednesday night when we talk about the parables, I say that almost every time, don't I? Join me in chapter 15, reading verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near and listening to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. What an accusation. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and her neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The word of God for the people of God. I just wanted to share this. I had not planned on saying this. This was not part of my preparation. But I had a moment where I was reading this scripture and the humor of this one statement just stood out to me. So laugh with me if you can find this funny. 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Okay, I don't know why I missed the humor in that when I was reading for this sermon, but that's pretty funny right there. Um, but context is everything. And, and looking at this Luke chapter 15, I, I, I've always said about this chapter, you can know nothing about the Bible. You can know nothing about Jesus. If you had never opened this Bible up and you opened up to Luke chapter 15 and you read that entire chapter, I think that's a pretty good place to start. It will tell you a lot about the inclusive nature of God's love, how God's love goes on forever. It does not stop reaching out to us. Now, we do know the narrative, right? We do know the Bible. We do know the gospel story of Jesus Christ. So we do know also that a part of this narrative is a people who just continue to not get it. Would you agree that's a part of the biblical narrative? So this Luke chapter 15, this story of the lost sheep, this story of the lost coin, and what story comes right after that? The prodigal son. That's really the, what encompasses the, the Luke chapter 15, three of the, the greatest parables ever told, back to back to back. But as we said, context is everything. And why did he tell these three parables? Look back at verses 1 and 2. This is everything that we need to know. Verses 1 and 2, everything we need to know about the setting of these three parables. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. That was not a compliment, was it? So he tells them a parable, followed by another parable, followed by another parable. As if you didn't get it the first time, let me tell you again. This is... A Jesus, 
Let's, let's go back to last week. What do we talk about? The cost of discipleship. This is a Jesus who is inviting people to leave the very comfort of their homes, the comfort of their church pew, and get out into the wilderness, the streets, into the countryside, and literally, with your hands and feet, carry a message of good news to whoever is willing to listen. Anyone and everyone. So who were the people who seemed to want to draw near to Jesus? In two verses, we hear everything we need to hear. The sinners and the tax collectors were drawing in to hear what he had to say. Do you see Jesus becoming like a magnet to these folks? I got a serious question for you. I mean, a very serious question. What kind of Jesus do you worship? I mean, is Jesus, is he wearing a white robe? Is he... Is he surrounded by gleams of light, almost like a, a sun radiance? Is he shiny, squeaky clean? Do you, do, do you worship a Jesus that is covered in sweat and mud because he's been out on the countryside looking for the lost? What kind of Jesus do you worship? Because what kind of Jesus you worship is going gonna, is gonna to do something for the, way you, for the way you actually do worship, for the way you actually do carry out your faith. What is faith if it doesn't meet us where we live, where we carry out our lives? I mean, do we want to we shine before the Lord or do we want to put on our traveling shoes and say, Jesus, here I am. I'm ready to carry out the good news. I had a, um, a good friend uh, who's a, a retired pastor friend, Michael Johnson. He's preached here, I think, one of my first years my first year here, um, in one of my absences, I, he, he came and preached here, but he told me, he's in my peer learning group, and he shared this hilarious story that almost did not sound true. It's so funny. But a very true story at a, at a, a church that he used to pastor at, well, they kind of had, had been talking about how uncomfortable the, the seats were in um, Sunday morning in, in the sanctuary. They were wooden pews, and so they begun this discussion. They actually put together a committee after that discussion to go and start researching uh, pew cushions. Uh, if y'all have ever been in a church that decided to, to make a change like that, it's, it's always something, you know, the color can be an issue, um, prices always matter. So all those things were, were asked to be considered by the committee, but they were given this authority to do that. So they went and worked, and it took them an entire six months to find what they thought was the right match. The right color, the right price, everything looked good. So they brought this to the church in a, in a business meeting. And everything was going well. Everybody seemed very excited. They seemed to like the color even. So it came ready for a vote. And all of a sudden, one elderly man raised his hand and stood up. He said, he said look, uh, you've got, you guys have done some great work here, but I just don't see why for one hour of worship that we need to worry about these cushions for just one hour of worship. I think we can handle it for just one hour. But y'all kind of know how these things go. This was kind of a patriarch in the church. He was an influential person, and, and he's, he, he really didn't have a malicious reason for saying that. I mean, this is not a guy who, I mean, if they had, you know, they could have moved on, they could have talked him into it, but nobody really wanted to stand up to him, so I guess the entire work of the committee was done. It was over with. The discussion was over and the conversation was dead. They were not going to get pew cushions in that church on that day. So imagine everyone's surprise when 
A few months later, they come back for their business meeting, and this same gentleman stands up and he says, I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and move forward with those pew cushions with the color and the price that they have, and I will volunteer to pay for them. Can you imagine everybody's surprise? I mean, they, everyone looked around at each other, and so he made a motion. There was a second. And the next thing you know, they voted, and it was unanimous. Everyone voted to get pew cushions on that day. Well, the meeting closed down, and everything, every people started to go about their way, and my friend Michael went to this gentleman, and he said, well, what? I don't understand what changed your mind. Why was it that one day that you didn't agree with this decision, and now that not only you agree with it, you're willing to pay for it. And he said, well, it's very simple. I didn't have hemorrhoids then. (laughs) I tell that story this morning because, not only just because it's funny, Because I think Jesus is telling this parable to a bunch of Pharisees and scribes to get off your butts and get out there and do what I'm doing. He's telling these parables to people who don't know how to love. They have no idea how to love God's people, which is not just the Pharisees, not just the Jews, it's everyone. See, this is very distinctive to what the Pharisees would not have said. They would not have said, there is much joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. You know what they would have said? And they would have believed and did believe? There is much joy in heaven over one sinner who is obliterated by God. That's a big difference. Which Jesus do you worship? Do you want to know the best way, the very best way to share God's love? The very best way is to actually love people. The best way is to actually care what people go through from day to day. That's the best way to share God's love. There's no special ingredient, there's no special secret It's just to do what God does, to do what Jesus did, to actually care. And that's what drives us to be willing to go wherever God is asking us to go. To go maybe we're a place we've never gone before. Because we really actually do love people. Have you ever lost something that was very important to you? There's a few things I want to mention. I just think about the three things I carry around. My keys, my cell phone, and my wallet. And for women, I will add your purses, which includes a thousand other things. So when you lose one of those things, what do you do? I'm going to add another thing. Because in this world, it's, it's amazing how much we love our television. Have you ever lost your remote? It is comical how hard I will look around the house for a remote and then to find out my son had hidden it. But what do you do when you find that thing? Or when you, let me go back. What do you do when you lose that thing? You look and you look and you look and you look until you find it. You will look in the funniest places You will look in the freezer because it's that important to you. It's that important to carry out your life. Well, folks, if Jesus had told this parable today, it would have been one of those four things. 
Look until you find it. That's our responsibility. It's not just part of the story. It's our responsibility. Care about every person who is lost. Actually care. What kind of Jesus do we worship? Will you join me in a word of prayer? Dear God, help us to see Jesus for who he really was, not just the Jesus we want him to be. God, we know that we're probably too comfortable sometimes to hear your voice. God, help us to truly care about the things that Jesus cared about, the things that you want us to care about. God, I thank you for all the people here who are willing and and ready to carry out a gospel and, and for whatever that means for us, however creative we need to be. But God, help us to, um, to look just a little bit harder, to care just a little bit more, to love just a little bit more. It is in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. I invite you this morning to look deep into your heart, to figure out maybe I'm one of these lost people. This is a Jesus, this is a God who is always making sure that we understand how loving our God is. This is a God who wants us to be in his fold, who wants us to be a part of his plan, and so I extend that same invitation to all of you. Choose God's love. Choose a path that's better. Not your own path, but God's path. And whatever or however God is moving in your life, I invite you to make that commitment this morning as we stand and sing our hymn of commitment number 306, Depth of Mercy. Will you join me as we sing together? I hope that sermon gave you hemorrhoids. <laughs> Will y'all join me in a word of prayer? May we all be blessed by the God of hope, love, and peace. And may we take that blessing out into the world that we too might become a blessing to others.
Hold on, don't go anywhere. I forgot, we are passing out our proposed budget today, so if, if you just take a few minutes while they pass that out and grab your budgets, and then we'll have the discussion on Wednesday night. Thank you.